So welcome back friends to the shop. I've got an exciting project for you guys today. It snowed all night last night. It's a chilly of 17 degrees when I came out of the house and we've got another three inches of snow last night and it's coming down like crazy. So do you know what we need? We need, or the sweet loaf needs, for me to finish up her sleigh. So if you're just joining us for the first time, um, I've got a couple videos on coming up to this point, but we're building a kind of a homestead old fashioned pole sleigh uh, for little kids out of, um, I forget if it was red or white oak. Um, so today what we need to do is, uh, is put everything together. Everything is just fitted loosely, uh, glue all the joints, and then we need to come up with a, uh, with a way to, to pull the sleigh. Now, since we live in the mountains, a lot of people suggested maybe we do a rope, um, and that's great on flat terrain, but it's not so good when you, if you're coming down a slope because the sleigh, well, it's pretty obvious. So we're going to need some sort of a rigid handle. So if we have enough time, uh, we'll get started on that as well. So let's, uh, let's just get to work. Let's do a quick review of the joints that we have to secure here. So this is up front of the sled. Of course, these uh, oak slats here uh, go into, uh, what is it? What do you call it? Is it a dado? I forget. Well, if you want, if you want woodworking channel, this is not the one for you. Uh, right there, so you can see how the, these, uh, these fit in there. So we'll have to secure those. I'll probably just use glue. Um, on those. I'll use uh, exterior grade or the blue tight bond glue. Um, uh, you know, this is not a really going to be a hard use item and I, I, I guess the reason I, I'm doing that is I don't want to have a bunch, of, a bunch of exterior screws in there if I have to. So we've got the, uh, that fits in there. So this is what the handle will be fixed to and that will give it plenty of strength. We have these uh, cross members, the front and rear uh, or the middle and the rear are the same and those will fit in there. And I think what I'll do also with that is I will secure these with glue um, and clamp away when we put everything together. Uh, now, if we do have a problem, one thing concern I have with this is, of course, is the, you know, the, the lateral forces there or, or the thing being racked uh, and damaged. What we might want to do is, is to put um, small gussets in there, some triangle pieces. Uh, to kind of stiffen that up a little bit. We'll wait and see. Let's, we'll get everything, um, the top boards, these will all be secured with uh, screws. So we, if we do need to do that, we can get in there and, and uh, make, make that happen. Uh, let me show you the back. Here you can see the back. It's the same, the same thing that we had in the middle and the, and the runners running down there. And again, the same thing. I think that we'll, we will just uh, we'll glue all that in there. Now, running screws in this way, it's you know, it, it does It does certainly help, but it's not ideal. Screws don't hold very good uh, into end grains like this. Uh, they, they have a tendency to want to pull out. Great the other way, uh, but not so much end grain. It, it's going to be a lot better with a hardwood like this and a soft, but I do think that that triangle angle in there, that might be the ticket. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. Let's get, we'll put, get it put together and see what happens. So fast forward a little bit. I've got uh, 15 of the 16 screws in. I decided to go with two screws per side there. I'm using these, um, I really like these screws. I get these at Home Depot, uh, the, what are they, GRK. Uh, these are in, number eights, inch and a quarter, and they're a mini Torx bit. They, uh, they look a little bit more elegant than a Phillips, and the, of course the Torx is far superior, and they, they're really wonderful screws. Um, and so I'm pre-drilling this with a um, uh, eighth inch or so bit and then putting those in. So we'll do this one here, this last one together. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not used to working with these hard woods. Boy, they are hard. This oak is a whole death, another animal from what I'm used to working on there. It's even hard to drill little holes through. You can see why they, they used it for fighting ships. After drilling the pilot hole, I'm using a, a small countersink bit uh, I use that uh, so that the screw uh, sits down below the top of the, of the wood so it's not sticking up. It looks a little bit uh, more finished, a little bit nicer. It's, you, you definitely want to do that when you're, you don't want, you don't want those screw heads sticking up and, and all of that either. It just takes a moment. It's just uh, a little bit of pressure on there. Like that, that sh just should be enough like that. Now we can put our last screw in. I tried to use the traditional woodworking tools for the majority of these slay, but I don't have any way of driving the, the Torx bits. <laughs> so I'm gonna use a cordless drill on here.
So I'm pretty pleased to see that that, uh, that has really made the sleigh stiff. It's, it's pretty rigid and that's without the, the main joints even being glued together uh, just by having those good quality screws in there. And after looking at it, I don't think that there's any reason to, um, to even have to secure the front of these. Um, they'll, they can just float in there and they're not hurting anything because the, the, the force that's going to be required to pull the sleigh uh, is going to be on this nose piece right there and that is a mortised into the sides and that will carry its own weight. So a little bit of glue in there uh, will take care of that. So I, I think we're pretty good good to go with this. Um, what, what I'll do is I'll take the screws back out. We'll go ahead and glue the, the bottoms of these as well as the screws. Put it, screw it together and then clamp it uh, and let it sit overnight. We'll, we'll clamp that those sides all together so they're nice and tight while that glues or that glue dries. And then while that's drying, we can get to work on the on the brackets for the for the handle. With the clamps on, we can take a moist cloth and uh, clean the glue off. You want to clean it off before it dries and it's a whole, whole lot easier. All right, friends, that's about all we can do on D's sled today. Um, we've got all of the joints glued and clamped and all of the fasteners in, and we'll let that sit over here for 24 hours. And, and then, um, and then uh, hopefully tomorrow, uh, we can put the handle on. It shouldn't take very long. I have an idea. I want to sleep on it and kind of think on that, make something that's going to be functional and easy to use that I can kind of hook to a belt behind me. So if we cross-country ski, we can put her in that. Um, and I can pull it hands-free is kind of what I'm what I'm thinking like we used to do with Jack when he was little So um, the snow is piling up. Let's go outside. You guys can come and help me with that Well, uh, we got to plow the driveway out before mrs. W gets back. She's out uh, doing her um, her and Jack are homeschooling where she's one of the teachers They have a co-op they go to a classical conversations as a curriculum um, and they do that on Tuesdays So they'll be back at about two hours. I give us plenty of time to get the snow plow for the driveway I'll plow that for so it looks like indeed we are going to get a pretty good dump of snow. So I'm going to bring the vehicles in and see if we can fit them all in the main shop. I got it all cleared out. That way we don't have to keep jockeying them around uh, when we plow. Uh, sometimes last year I had to plow a couple times, uh, three times a day. It, it came down so hard. So it could that could happen again. Well, the old Ford doesn't get driven like it used to since we got the van. I prefer driving the van. 
but this has been a good truck. I bought this truck in, oh, was it 2000? It must have been around 2008 for $4,000 and it had 175,000 miles on it then. Now it's pushing 300 and it still doesn't burn any oil. It's just been a, an awesome truck. I think that V10 engine, although not the most powerful, uh, has is probably one of the smoothest running, one of the best engines Ford's ever built. I've got two of them and neither one of them has given me any trouble and they're both 300,000 miles. They're close to it. I think the van might be over. Maybe under. There we go, everybody safe inside and plenty of room for Mrs. Wrangler Star's car. I didn't know that it all fit in here so good. That's gonna be nice. Get Jack out here, sweep the snow off of it and we'll have dry cars. All right, we'll see you guys on the next side of the storm. I wish you could have all seen what we woke up to this morning. It uh, was snowing, snowed all night. And uh, this morning it was just the sun came out and everything is just covered in a foot of fresh uh, light snow. It's absolutely beautiful. All of the trees are flocked and it's just just incredible. Incredible. So last night, uh, boy, the storm was bad last night. We have um, fire firefighting training or we have drill on Tuesday nights, 630. And uh, I went in last night uh, for a drill and we had uh, uh, we we're watching some videos. Um, our, our captain was showing some videos of um, talking about the dangers of uh, driving uh, with lights and sirens on and, and what can happen. And we did some case studies of um, some terrible accidents that had happened. One in particular really, um, boy, it really grabbed me, grabbed my heart. Um, it was um, told from the perspective of a mother who was with her two uh, sons, just amazing kids. One was 18 and one was 15. And the 18-year-old was driving. Um, and a young um, a female police officer uh, was running um, um, 85 miles an hour to a call, and the, the call was um, a six-year-old child out of control. And she got excited, and um, anyway, it ended up, um, she passed, it was nighttime, she passed just as the, uh, this family was turning and, and hit them on the side and ended up killing those two boys. The, the mother lived um, watching her her sons die and um, of course the police officer lived as well and I um, oh it just broke my heart listening to that and uh, I, I was thinking on my way home as I was driving um, how important family is and how quickly uh, your life can change she said something about my life was perfect it was idyllic it was it was everything that I could have hoped for and dream and in one minute um, everything was destroyed and I, I was thinking about, um, you know, it's, you only have young, especially, you know, young teenagers or Jack just turned 13 or so, you know, it's, it, we butt heads sometimes and we have disagreements. And when I, I had gotten after him for a little bit for some chores that he had not uh, uh, completed when I left. And I, I just thought, man, if something were to happen to, to him and, and I would have left um, the house the way that, that I had and, and um, I, I just don't know if I could. I wouldn't want to carry that burden the rest of my life. And I, it was a good reminder. The first thing, I, I just couldn't wait to get home and, and to put my arms around my family and, and to tell them all how important they are to me. And um, it was just such a great reminder for me, you know, not to get caught up in these things. And, you know, of course, we have to discipline our children. And, but um, 
We don't have to do it in anger, and we don't have to. Um, it, it's just does it. It just doesn't matter. It just you know the, it, it's. I guess the thing that I wanted to do is, or I learned from that was to, uh, as my granddad used to say, don't sweat the small stuff. Grab your family and make sure that every moment of the day that they know that you love them and, uh, and, uh, that's, that's all. <laughs>